Welcome to Frozen Treats and City Streets, a history and crafts video from the Museum of the City of New York in collaboration with Project Kid. I'm Maeve Montalvo, Director of Education at the Museum's Frederick A.O. Schwartz Education Center. Today's video is all about ice cream. You'll learn how to make models of some of your favorite treats using paper and other household materials. Amanda Kingloff of Project Kid will take you step by step through the process. Feel free to pause the video at any time to go gather materials or go back to watch how to do a step again. Now, I'll whet our appetite by sharing some of New York City's ice cream history. New Yorkers have always loved ice cream. The first ice cream shop in America opened in Manhattan near today's Pearl Street during the American Revolution. At first, ice cream was a treat for the wealthy, who ate it in dessert shops, outdoor pleasure gardens, and in some of the city's earliest restaurants, such as Delmonico's. Soon, though, ice cream and frozen ices became treats on the street. Here we see a pushcart vendor selling frozen desserts to newspaper boys in the late 19th century. Moving frozen ice cream around was hard work. Here's a horse pulling a wagon filled with tubs of ice cream through Central Park in the year 1895. New York's been home to some ice cream inventions as well. While there are many different accounts of who actually invented the first ice cream cone, the first patent for an ice cream cone was granted in 1904 to Italo Marchioni, an Italian man who immigrated to Brooklyn and sold flavored ice near Wall Street. Haagen-Dazs was invented in the Bronx by Polish-Jewish immigrants Reuben and Rose Mattis in 1960. And Queens can boast the longest running ice cream locale. Eddie's Sweet Shop in Forest Hills has been scooping ice cream for almost 100 years. Ice cream has also been at the center of protests in the city, including the 1913 ice cream workers strike and boycotts of seal test dairy products over racial discrimination in that company's hiring practices in the mid 20th century. You can read the museum's blog post, Civil Rights in Brooklyn, to learn more about that story. Throughout it all, ice cream has remained a favorite treat for New Yorkers on hot days. So, whether it's ice cream, ices, shaved ice, piraguas, frio frio, raspados, gelato, booza, kulfi, soft serve, custard, or frozen yogurt, enjoy your frozen treats on our city's streets. I hope you've enjoyed this tasty bit of history from the Museum of the City of New York. Now, get ready to do some sweet crafting with Amanda Kingloff of Project Kid. Hi, I'm Amanda Kingloff from ProjectKid.com. I am so excited to be here with the Museum of the City of New York to do what I love to do most in the entire world, crafting. We are going to mix traditional craft supplies with upcycled materials with household supplies that you might never have thought you would use at a craft. And what are we gonna make today? We are going to make what everyone loves to eat on a hot, hot summer day. We're gonna make an ice cream cone, a popsicle, and an ice cream sandwich. So you can always visit projectkid.com for fresh craft ideas. You can check out my books, Project Kid and Project Kid Crafts That Go. Now let's gather up all your supplies and let's get crafting. In this first project, I'm gonna show you how to make this really cute ice cream cone. So you need a brown paper shopping bag, and scissors, glue or tape, colored paper and pencils, and something red like a bottle cap, a bead, red paper, or even a pom-pom. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to get a piece of, cut a piece of the brown shopping bag. We want it to be about 11 inches by about seven inches approximately. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take your brown pencil and you are going to draw lines because we're making a sugar cone and sugar cones or waffle cones have the lines drawn on them. So you can take 
a straight edge or a ruler if you want to and make it really perfect, or you could just sort of eyeball it. So as you can see, I'm drawing little lines diagonally across the paper. So you're gonna do that about every half inch or so, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then once you make it all the way across, you're gonna go back the other way to make the waffle. So I would go back this way to make the grid. And I have one here that is already fully waffle coned out, as you can see. And now I'm gonna show you how to make the actual cone. So what you wanna do is you wanna turn it upside down and sort of create like a V shape at the bottom or like a cone shape actually. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna just sort of squeeze it together and with your hand, you're gonna just like roll it and try and keep the point at the bottom as pointy as possible because you don't want your ice cream to drip out of your cone, right? So you're gonna just kind of keep swirling the paper around. And if you need an extra set of hands, I'm sure a grown up that's nearby can kind of help you make your cone really tight and, and nice. So at this point, you can either put glue underneath or you could use tape. Since we're just doing this video, I'm gonna just use a quick piece of tape because that'll secure it really easily. So I'm just gonna put a piece of tape on the outside right there and we have a cone. So now, because I make, if you're making a waffle cone, this is a great waffle cone, but we're gonna make a sugar cone. So I'm gonna just take my scissors and I'm gonna cut around to make it sort of flat on the top, like a traditional sugar cone. So see, that's, that's our ice cream cone. It's great, right? So now, Think about what kind of flavor you like the best. I'm a big fan of mint chip, so I went with the mint green. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut little strips going vertically, long ways on your paper. This is just a regular 11 inch tall piece of paper. And you're gonna cut strips that are about, oh, I don't know, like a half inch to three quarters of an inch wide. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect because if you ever seen, I don't think I've ever seen a perfectly round ice cream scoop. They're always a little wonky, right? So you're just gonna cut about 10 strips of paper. And since I'm making mint chip, I need to add the chips. So I'm gonna take my colored pencil and I'm going to just make little chip-like shapes on my, on my paper. And they, you know, they, they don't have to be perfect because again, chocolate chips are never really, and ice cream are never really perfect. They're just kind of little rectangles and whatnot. I have a few more pieces over here that I already cut. And you're just gonna make all of your, you know, it'd be really cute if you did ice cream with sprinkles. You could make sprinkles with all different color pieces of paper. I would think that would be super, super cute. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to attach these strips to our cone to make the ice cream. So I am going to use glue because it's really easy to do. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a strip and you're gonna kind of bend the bottom ever so slightly. So there's like a tiny little bend in there. And you're gonna put a dot of glue on one end and then you're gonna flip it around and you're gonna bend the other end and you're gonna put a little tiny dot of glue on that. And you can also use tape for this, not a big deal. So then you're gonna take your cone and you're going to attach your strip into the cone. You're gonna just like hold it in place. One, two, three. I use tacky glue, which is um, a great glue because it dries really quickly and it holds really strong. And then you're gonna loop your strip back and you're gonna find the place just opposite where you started and glue the loop in there. So your first strip is gonna kinda of look like this. Not quite so ice creamy looking yet, but we will get there, I promise. 
And then for your next strip, I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna bend my strip at the end again, bend the other one, add my dots of glue, dot. You don't need a lot of glue. In fact, the, the smaller amount, the better. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach this right next to the first strip. So I'm gonna attach it right here next to the first strip. I'll show you. See, it's right next to the first strip. And then you're gonna go up and over the first strip and back in to the cone and attach it again. And you're just gonna keep working all the way around until you get your ice cream cone. And then you will end up with something like this. And if you want to add a cherry on top, you can use, I have a pom-pom, or you could use a, just like a red bottle cap. That works perfectly also from like a soda bottle or a water bottle. If you have any beads, you could use those. If you don't have any of these things, you can just take a little red piece of paper, kind of ball it up really well, and you'll be amazed at how you can make a cherry out of just a little piece of paper. I hope you enjoyed it. For this project, we are gonna make this classic red, white, and blue popsicle. So for this project, you need red, white, and blue paint, or red, white, and blue paper, or red, white, and blue tape if you have that, scissors, cardboard, just from like a cardboard box, Cardboard tubes, either from a toilet paper roll, two toilet paper rolls, or if you have a paper towel roll, you can cut that in half, and glue. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to make our tubes red, white, and blue. So I'm going to use paint. If you don't have paint, you can use paper, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So you're gonna take your tube and you're gonna paint the whole thing white. And the reason I do this is because when you put paint on cardboard, generally the brown cardboard likes to show through. So if you paint it fully white first, then it creates like a bright white layer and the colors that you put on top of it will be a whole lot brighter. So you're gonna paint both of your tubes fully white and it's kind of fun to do. You just sort of spin it around as you go. And I like to just put it on my fingers. You can also have a, your grown up hold it for you if that's easier. But it's always good when you're painting at home to make sure you're painting over a paper plate, newspaper, or anything, because you don't want to get in trouble for getting paint on your table. Okay, so now we have a fully white tube. Beautiful. I'm going to set it right here. And then I happen to have a white one that is already painted. So I'm going to paint blue and red on it. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you, if you don't have paint, you can always just cover your tube in white paper and take blue and red paper and wrap it around like this and tape it on either end. And, and you, you end up with the same exact look. Look how great that looks. But I'm going to just go ahead and paint mine since I've already started with the painting process. So I'm gonna grab another brush and I'm gonna do my blue. And I like to just kind of take my brush and go, oop, and just swipe up and try and line it up all the way around and get a nice, pretty blue stripe. And then I'm gonna just go over it. And you're painting about a third of it blue, a third of it white, and a third of it red just like these famous popsicles. I know my kids love these popsicles. I think the flavors are cherry, blue raspberry, and who knows what the white one is in between. So we'd have a nice blue strip, and then I'm going to grab, I'm gonna hold it again with my fingers, kind of spread my fingers out to hold it really nice and tight. And I am going to paint my red stripe on. Ooh, 
red popsicles are my favorite. And it's really fun to make play food. I love making crafts of food because first of all, you don't always get to eat them, but you can play with them, you can decorate them, you could add, attach a little note to it and give it to your grown up and say, you're so sweet. I mean, there's so many fun things you could do. You could make a bunch of them and string them up and hang them in your room. I mean, there's so many fun things you can do with these. With these, you can play with your stuffed animals or your dolls and pretend that an ice cream truck is coming by. Okay, great. So now we have a white one and a striped one, and I have another striped one already painted. So now we have two. You can make single pops too. That's totally fine. So I'm going to stand these up and I'm going to show you how to make the sticks. I'm going to move this off to the side. So now we have cardboard and this is just your good old fashioned cardboard box cardboard that I know we all have in abundance. So what you're going to do, and you may need to ask a grown up to help with this because sometimes it's kind of tricky to cut through cardboard. You're going to cut about, it's not quite an inch. It's probably like, if you look at the strips, the little lines in the cardboard, it's probably about three lines wide and you're just going to cut a strip to make your popsicle stick. Of course, if you have popsicle sticks, go ahead and use those. But some of us don't have those at home, so we're just gonna make them. And you know, popsicle sticks always have like a rounded bottom. So I'm just gonna kind of trim off the bottom edges to make it round. And do it on the other one. They're looking a little thick, so I'm gonna just go ahead and trim it a little bit more just so it's a little bit thinner. I'm kind of going for like the, the wider tongue depressor look. And let's trim this one a tad bit. Okay, now we have both of our tongue depressors. So then the next step is you are going to put a line of glue in between your two tubes. So I'm gonna grab my glue and I'm just gonna hold one of my tubes. You wanna make sure they're dry first. And you're gonna add a line of glue on one tube. And then you're just gonna line them up and hold them together. I'm gonna lay it here, right here on my plate. Just like that. And then you're gonna take your pretend popsicle sticks, put a line of glue on the back of each one and glue them right into the bottom of the tube. And let it dry. And then you end up with this super cute red, white, and blue popsicle. And now for probably my favorite frozen treat, we are going to make a chocolate chip cookie ice cream sandwich, otherwise known as a chip witch. So for this project, you are going to need a mug or something round, a jar, a bowl, anything that you can trace, some brown paper, regular old cardboard, glue, cotton balls, a pencil, and scissors. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to trace our cup on the cardboard. And this is sort of an optional step. Like I think that if you don't, if you wanna just eyeball it, you can. Um, but I kind of just like to give myself a basic shape. But to be honest, chocolate chip cookies are never perfectly round, are they? No. So when I cut it out, so you can see that there's a line there. When I cut it out, it doesn't really have to be perfect. I'm even gonna kind of like go a little like wonky and cut in inside the line and kind of imperfectly because chocolate chip cookies are never perfectly round. See, so now I'm gonna put that aside and then 
I have one already cut, so now I have the top and the bottom of my ice cream sandwich. And now I have to fill it with ice cream, which I'm going to use cotton balls. If you don't have cotton balls, you could use white pom-poms. You could even just ball up white paper and kind of make it into like little clumps and glue it on the inside. But I have white, um, white cotton balls, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use those. So you're gonna take your glue and kind of cover, you know, you don't need to cover it too much, but you wanna kind of give it like, you know, a nice amount of coverage um, to attach your cotton balls or your ice cream. Let's call it ice cream. And I'm just gonna take my cotton balls and sort of just place them around in a circle. And I think I'm gonna need, how many am I gonna need? About eight or so, depending on how big you make your chip witch. Kind of smush it all in there, that one we don't need. And then I'm gonna take my top cookie and just flip it upside down, and now we have our cookie. But a chip witch is not a chip witch until it has its chocolate chips. So what I'm using is just brown construction paper. So what I'm do gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut teeny little strips. Some people would call it fringe. It's like when you wear a costume and it has all those like fringy strings, it's called fringe. But this is a very quick and easy way to make tiny pieces of brown paper. So I am going to now just, add, I'm gonna kind of fold this paper back and I'm gonna cut across the brown paper to make all of my tiny chocolate chips. And you can see they're just falling right onto the table. And they don't have to be perfect. In fact, they shouldn't be perfect because chocolate chips that are in cookies and on ice cream sandwiches are never really exactly perfect. So now, I'm gonna take my glue, and this is a little time consuming, but it's kind of fun. You can you know, watch a TV show while you're doing it or have a conversation with your grown up. I'm just gonna take my glue and I'm just gonna add tiny little dots all over the surface of my top cookie. And you can do it on the bottom too if you'd like. Just tiny little dots. You really don't need a whole lot of glue for this. And then you're gonna pick up your chocolate chips and just tap them down. And once you get a little, a little dot of glue on your finger, you can kind of just use your finger to pick up all the pieces and it makes it really quick and easy. See how I'm doing that? Oops, I missed that one. And you're gonna add all your little chocolate chips. If you want to, you can also use a brown pencil or marker to color chocolate chips on the top if you don't wanna do it this way. But chip witches also have chocolate chips along the edges. So you're gonna add dots of glue on your cotton ball or whatever your stand-in for ice cream is. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're just gonna add little chocolate chips all the way around to add your chocolate chips to your chip witch. I mean, this is like really making me hungry for an ice cream sandwich. Ah, I'm having trouble picking it up. Okay, here we go. So we can just add them all the way and just add as many as you want, go all the way around. If you wanna like design your own chip witch, maybe like you add colored sprinkles. I mean, it could be really fun to design your own ice cream sandwich. So now I'm just gonna show you the one I have that's already done. And my daughter came up with this idea. She goes, mommy, what if you cut out a little section like someone took a bite out of it? And I thought that was so cute. So I did, I cut out a little section and didn't put any chocolate chips in there because usually the chocolate chips are just on the outside. And now we have a really yummy ice cream sandwich. I think I need to go to my freezer and get some dessert now. I hope you enjoyed watching, bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for this session of History and Crafts from the Museum of the City of New York and Project Kid. I hope you'll join us again for a future project. Feel free to share a picture of your completed project on social media. We're at Museum of City NY. Finally, for more videos and projects from Project Kid, visit projectkid.com. And to learn more about New York City's history, visit us at the Museum of the City of New York 
at www.mcny.org.